Hello again. More characters introduced. First off, Luther. And it, I think it's best to explain Luther by explaining that um, up on the higher plane, we can't really see say that these creatures have the individual nature that that we have down here. In the last reading, it seems quite clear that Rintra and his wrathfulness was actually able to enter Satan. And what happened was, was that the committee then who decided who should be blamed actually blamed Rintra for the way that Satan was behaving. Now, in this situation, we have Luther, a daughter of Beulah, who is actually saying that she entered Satan and she was the cause of what he did. Now, she, as a daughter of Beulah, belongs to that dreamlike state. But as he stated at the very beginning, dreams can be of two different types. And it would seem here that Luther is of a bad dream type. And, um, well, I think anyway, with this understanding, it'll help us get along with the reading. And then if need be, I'll say a little more in the conclusion. And therefore the class of Satan shall be called the elect, and those of Rintra the reprobate, and those of Palamabron the redeemed. For he is redeemed from Satan's law, the wrath falling on Rintra. And therefore Palamabron dared not to call a solemn assembly till Satan had assumed Rintra's wrath in the day of mourning in a feminine delusion of false pride, self-deceived. So spoke the Eternal, and confirmed it with a thunderous oath. But when Lutha, a daughter of Beulah, beheld Satan's condemnation, she down descended into the midst of the great solemn assembly, offering herself a ransom for Satan, taking on her his sin. Mark well my words, they are of your eternal salvation. And Lutha stood glowing with varying colours immortal, heart-piercing and lovely, and her moth-like elegance shone over the assembly. At length, standing upon the golden floor of Palamabron, she spake, I am the author of this sin. By my suggestion, my parent power, Satan has committed this transgression. I loved Palamabron, and I sought to approach his tent. But beautiful Elenatria, with her silver silver arrows repelled me, for her light is terrible to me. I fade before her immortal beauty. O oh, wherefore doth a dragon form fort issue from my limbs to seize her newborn son? Ah me, the wretched Lutha, this to prevent entering the doors of Satan's brain night after night, like sweet perfumes. I stupefied the masculine perceptions and kept only the feminine awake. Hence rose his soft, delusory love to Palamabron, admiration joined with envy, cupidity unconquerable. My fault when at noon of day the horses of Palamabron called for rest and pleasant death. I sprang out of the breast of Satan, over the harrow beaming in all my beauty, that I might unloose the flaming steeds, as Elnatrisa used to do. But too well those living creatures knew that I was not Elnatria, and they break the traces. But me the servants of the harrow saw not, but as a bow of varying colours on the hills. Terribly raged the horses, Satan astonished and with power above his own control, compelled the gnomes to curb the horses and to throw banks of sand around the fiery flaming harrow in labyrinthine forms, and brooks between to intersect the meadows in their course. The harrow cast thick flames, Jehovah thundered above, chaos and ancient night fled from beneath the fiery harrow. The harrow cast thick flames and orbed us round in concave fire, 
a hell of her own making, see, its flames still gird me round. Jehovah thundered above, Satan in pride of heart drove the fierce harrow along the constellations of Jehovah, drawing a third part in the fires of stubble, north and south, to devour Albion and Jerusalem, the emanation of Albion, driving the harrow in pity's paths, Twas then with our dark fires which now geared round us, O eternal torment, I formed a serpent of precious stones and gold, turned poisons on the sultry wastes. The gnomes in all that day spared not. They cursed Satan bitterly to do unkind things in kindness, with power armed to say the most irritating things in the midst of tears and love. These are the stings of the servant serpent thus did we by them till thus they in turn retaliated and the living creatures maddened the gnomes laboured i weeping hid in satan's inmost brain but when the gnomes refused to labour more with blandishments i came forth from the head of satan back the gnomes recoiled and called me sin and for a sign portentous held me Soon day sunk and Palamabron returned. Trembling I hid myself in Satan's inmost palace of his nervous fine wrought brain. For Elnatria met Satan with all her singing women, terrific in their joy and pouring wine of wildest power. They gave Satan their wine, indignant at the burning wrath, wild with prophetic fury. His former life became like a dream. Clothed in the serpent's folds, in selfish holiness demanding purity, being most impure, self-condemned to eternal tears, he drove me from his inmost brain, and the doors closed with thunder's sound. Divine vision, who didst create the female, to repose the sleepers of Beulah, pity the repentant Luther. So there are a few things to be said about this. First of all, it's generally understood that Elinatria is actually Blake's wife, Catherine. And Luther, the spirit entering into Satan, is a spirit of jealousy about Catherine. For Satan seems to be caught up in an ambivalent attitude between love and envy for Blake himself. Make what you want of that, the commenters have. So, Luther, anyway, she does her, she does her level best. She even fights off the gnomes, which are the other fellow poets and artists in the circle. And in the end, for all her trouble, all that happens is that Satan simply closes her off kicks her out of his brain and she's left them um, she's left redundant and sorry and lamenting for herself nothing left to do except thank you for listening and that i hope to see you next time bye for now